Hi there, and welcome to Studio SN, your place for card making, rubber stamping, and paper crafting tutorials. My name is Sarah Newman, and I'm so very glad you're here. Today we're going to be creating patterned backgrounds with Duralar and Opal Polish. And you can see this area here up at the top of my card. As I tilt this, you'll probably see the shine of the Duralar, which is a plastic film, but you'll also see this really subtle pattern on here, which has been stenciled with opal polish. So it's a combination of some of my very favorite supplies, a really easy technique to do. So I'm going to show you the supplies I'm working with and then we'll get into the process. So I'll move aside my card here and I'm going to show you the Duralar that I'm working with. So this is a wet media film and when I open up the top of this packet here, you'll see that this is actually a clear plastic film. Underneath there's a, a piece of tissue that's separating each of those pages of film in here. So all you need to do is just tear it out and you are ready to go. It's a non-porous surface which makes it perfect for lots of different mediums, including opal polish. So opal polish is from Creative Expressions and this is a really cool kind of texture medium that's also got some mica pigment and it gives a really beautiful luminescent effect to your projects. It also works really beautifully with a stencil, including a stencil that has obviously been very, very well used. And this is the Eclectica stencil. This is the PS102. I call it the squashy dots. As you can see, it's one of my favorites. So these are the elements that we're going to combine to create the background. Now also on my card, you'll notice that I've got a really pretty die cut flower motif on here and I'm gonna show you this process as well. Okay, so I'm going to set aside all of these elements here. I'm going to keep out my stencil and also I'm going to bring in a piece of white cardstock. So this is not the piece that I'm going to use on my card, but it's actually going to be put to use for another card sometime down the road. What I'm really interested in is using the medium that I'm going to apply onto the stencil to do kind of a reverse stenciling technique. So I've got my stencil on hand, I've got my opal polish on hand, and I've also got a cut piece of my Duralar. Now I've, I've left on this tissue paper here just so that I could find it more easily on my work surface because clear things can tend to disappear a little bit. I also have a palette knife and that's what I'm going to use to, um, to apply my opal polish. So the cool thing about opal polish is that it actually has a built-in applicator, little sponge that comes right on the top. Now you can wash the sponges, you can rinse them. I usually give them a little bit of a mist with some water if I'm going to use them. You can also refresh your opal polish by spritzing just a quick bit of water in here in between uses. But I've used this quite regularly. As you can see, I don't have a whole lot left. I've put it to good use. And the color that I'm using is lavender blue. So what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of this onto my palette knife. You can see that the consistency of it is quite nice. It's pretty thick, it's not dripping off. It's going to work beautifully with the stencil. Now I could uh, tack down the stencil with some washi tape or some stencil tape if I want to, but in this case, I'm just going to go straight on here and hold it down with my hand. And again, the, the piece that I'm stenciling onto is actually just gonna be my bonus piece because I'm going to save that for another card down the road. But you can see how nicely this does stencil. Okay, I just really want to make sure that I get a nice area of my stencil covered with this beautiful opal polish. And I think you can see the luminescence of it. It's just beautiful. And this is one of my favorite colors as well. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of scrape off some of the excess here. And then what I'm going to do is lift off the stencil. You can see how beautiful that is. <laughs> we'll save that for something else. And then I'm going to bring in another piece of just scrap paper here and put this down. I've got my Duralar ready. And I'm going to give this a, just a quick mist with some water just to keep that activated. I'm going to take my piece of Duralar 
and it, there's no right or wrong side to this, so either one. And I'm just going to place this on here and smooth this down to make sure that I really come in contact with all of the areas of that beautiful polish. And then I'm going to lift it straight up, make sure not to slide it off. I'll move this aside and then I'll just flip this over and you can see that beautiful pattern that has come out. Now it's a nice soft to subtle pattern. I think it will look just beautiful onto that white background. Now I've still got some opal polish on my palette knife. I'm going to make sure to scrape that off. I'm going to put that into a glass jar of water just so that uh, it doesn't dry on there. Make sure to put the lid back on because this does dry pretty quickly so you don't want to leave the container open. Now the nice thing about this, I just need to let it dry, but in the meantime, you can also kind of play with some other pieces of cardstock. So if you wanted to, you could layer it up onto maybe some bright pink, or you could go for a more tone on tone effect, or you could even do some high contrast with the black, and I think that looks super striking. So you've got lots of different options for what you're going to layer this on top of. And I'll bring back in my original card and you can see that I've just simply put it onto the front of my plain white card. Now, a lot of people might be wondering, what do you use to adhere everything down? Even though it's clear, I find that a glue stick just does the trick. And that's what I've used. I've applied the glue stick all the way around on four sides. I've done a little bit of extra here in the center where I know it will be covered by that die cut element but it's even though it's clear it's really not showing a whole lot and i did make sure to concentrate it where some of the color is a little bit stronger do when you're applying your ink or your uh, glue do apply it to the card itself rather than to the duralar because the card is a porous cardstock it's a porous material so it will kind of grab onto that glue a little bit better and absorb some of it so you don't get a big squishy puddle but a glue stick will do the trick I would suggest not using a double-sided tape because I think that will be a little bit more obvious on there. Okay, so now we've got our background done. Let's take a look at how to create the die cut element. Duralar cuts really cleanly, so you can either use it with scissors or you can run it through a paper trimmer like I usually do. You can also use it in combination with your cutting dies, and that's how I've created this floral motif on here too. Now Duralar is also heat resistant, which means that I can add a little bit of clear embossing powder on top of that opal polish and heat set it. That's going to give me a little bit of extra texture on my flower as well as that beautiful opal polish color. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to bring in a piece of Duralar and I'll just remove that tissue from under here so that you can see. And I'm going to bring back in my opal polish. And this time I'm just going to apply the opal polish straight from the jar using my palette knife. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this out and then kind of spread it on. It's almost like frosting a cake. I want to have enough of the medium on here so that I can get a, a nice layer of color. But I don't need it to be really high or super thick. So choice is up to you. I'm going to add some ultra thick embossing powder on here. So that's going to give me even more uh, coverage and texture and shine. Okay, so I've got this on here. Now before it dries, I want to add my embossing powder. Let me just scrape off all of the excess of that beautiful color on here. And you can just see how lovely that is. Scrape that off, put my palette knife in the jar of water and make sure that that lid is on securely. So my opal polish is actually going to act like my embossing ink. So I'm going to add some clear gloss ultra high embossing powder on here and then I can do some heat setting. So I'm going to just grab a piece of scrap paper here so that I have something to funnel all of that embossing powder back into the jar. And all I'm going to do with this is just sprinkle it on. Now I'm not covering the whole thing too much. I'm not worried about really getting a lot of coverage on here. I just want it to have a little bit of extra texture. So I've got this all on here and then tap off my excess. 
And then I'm going to heat set this piece. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're heat setting your Durilar or really any piece that's going to be this big. You do want to work onto a heat resistant surface. So I've got a craft sheet under me here. You'll also want to warm up your heat tool for a couple of seconds, turn it on, turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, and that will have it sort of primed and ready to go for your heat setting. So I'm gonna turn this on and start melting the embossing powder. Now that my embossing powder has melted, I can move on to the next step and do my die cutting. So the dies that I'm working with are from my friend Julie Hickey, and this is her Floral Fancies die set. And I'm using this large blossom here as well as one of the smaller pieces down here. Now you know with your cutting dies that you have a cutting edge and the other side is a smooth side. So as soon as your piece of Duralar has cooled completely, then you can simply take your die, pop it down on top. I secure it down with a little bit of washi tape. You can use stencil tape or masking tape. Do make sure this is completely cool before you pop this down though. And then you can just send it through your die cutting machine as you would a piece of cardstock and it die cuts beautifully. I was really impressed. So let's take a look at the rest of the card and see how to finish it off. So you can see I've cut the large blossom and I've also cut a smaller one here. I've layered these with pieces of white cardstock in between just so that I have a little bit more um, depth on there and so that the blue shows up really nicely. I've simply punched a hole in the center so I could insert a brad into the middle and then added this with foam tape. Now the stamped sentiment that I have on here is also from the lovely Julie and this is from her Garden Treasures collection and I've used this one that says, if friends were flowers, then I'd pick you. So there are lots of nice botanical motifs on here too that you could also incorporate into your card. But I've kept it pretty clean and simple. I used an oval die also from Creative Expressions. This is from their Noble collection. Everything's up on some foam tape, a little bit of Baker's Twine on here, and I've got my card ready to go. So this is how you can combine opal polish with Duralar stamps and cutting dies to create a really fun and textured card. Thank you so much for joining me today on Studio SN. If you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe to Studio SN on YouTube and I'll keep you updated on the very latest stamping and card making videos. In the meantime, please feel free to stop by my website, sarahnewman.com, for more paper crafting ideas. Thanks again and I will see you next week.